Hello there. Thanks for checking out a fresh episode of the Masterclass on Profitability that is sponsored by CNR and Encircle. I am very excited to have Trish Wall with me today. She is from Serve Pro Team Wall and she knows a whole lot about organizational structure. So I wanted to bring her in to talk specifically on that topic as it relates to profitability and how having a healthy organizational structure, maybe kind of thinking outside the box, excuse me, of what that looks like, um, can help increase the profitability overall of your business. So Trish, thank you very much for joining me. So share a little bit about your background and Serve Pro Team while you've had some recent growth as well. So share a little bit about yourself and your company for those who aren't familiar with you. Yeah, sure. Thanks for having me. I appreciate this. Um, I love sharing and I love learning. So um, thank you. But yes, yeah, so we're Serve Pro Team Wall. We started out as just Serve Pro of Hunt Valley and um, Lutherville as one life, one Serve Pro franchise license back in 2009. Um, we have re- we expanded in 2019 from one market to three. And actually about three weeks ago now, we expanded to our fourth office in Chantilly, Virginia, which is um Northern Virginia, right outside of DC. So we're very excited about that. So it was actually a lot easier because we had our org structure kind of world under control this time. So much, much easier. Um, We are up to about 171 employees now. So a lot of people to structure. (laughs) So I'm happy to share my experiences. So what, if you had to say maybe three things that you would attribute to your company's growth over the last few years, what would you attribute that to? All right. So number one, we say yes to everything and we figure it out. So that's the thing that catapulted us through the first 11 years. Okay. It's also the thing that has made me want to put my head through a wall for the last three years. Cause we just- <laughs> And I'm just joking about that, but sometimes not. (laughs) No, I'm sure. I you you say yes to everything, and you're just tires are burning underneath trying to like figure it out. And the mess that has been created from always saying yes, but not having that structure behind it is huge. We are getting there, and I'm up for the challenge. But I, if I could put advice out there, like if you are small, if you're a ten person company. Put the work in now to get yourself structured and organized and documented. Um, But that's number one. That was always saying yes. Number two was then three years ago, putting some intentional focus um, to what our structure looks like. What does our process look like? And then number three is now what we're trying to do is build up our middle management and our executive management team to start empowering them to specialize um, their focus on um, specific business divisions, Um, so. All right, so as you were kind of figuring out the organizational structure, how did you see that also change your company in terms of being able to be more profitable and probably being more lean? Was it helping your company be more lean once you figured out what the structure should look like? Yeah, so um, I would say, you know, profitability, when you're thinking about org structure, I think everybody's head goes straight to, what people are filling the seats and how much are we paying for them? And it's so much more than that. I mean, it was hard. I mean, I work with my husband and his strengths are very many and so are mine, but they're very different. And he saw a new position as somebody taking out of the bottom line. And it's been hard to like work together and get his perspective to change and think, you know, it's another body. Yes. But what is this going to do to everybody's efficiency and productivity and oversight and being able to keep people accountable at the end of the day. So, Mm -hmm. um, I think the very first thing you have to do and what we did a couple years ago, put it down on paper. There's probably a lot of people out there that have the org structure in their mind it's hard to focus and see it. It's very blurry. Put it on paper and look at it. And you can really see like the, um, you know, unbalancedness that it could possibly have, you know? So I would say, put it on paper and then start looking at the direct reports. Um, you know, you think in terms of like, put yourself, be empathetic and put yourself into that person's seat on that org chart. And if you have 10 different direct reports that are all job file coordinators or whatever you want to call claims managers, um, whatever the position title is, do you have time to do intentional and um, valuable performance reviews for all those people? 
Do you have time to have one-on-one -on -one meetings on a regular cadence with all those people? And then also do all of your other job responsibilities. So you have to be thinking in terms of, is this reasonable? Can this person provide the uh, coaching that they need? Um, so that those two things you got to do. And then um, I think also something to consider is like specialization. I know this is not really possible in small teams. You know, if you only have 10 people in your entire team, this is hard, but there's like 12 different business divisions that we've identified that are necessary to have some sort of oversight on. So you got to have mitigation production operations mm -hmm. that has to have oversight construction production operations, which is totally separate and different than how mitigation works. Yeah. You need to have intake scheduling dispatching. You got to have your file, job file and claims management, um, estimating, accounting, finance, recruiting, human resources, sales, marketing. Those are two different things and training yes. development. <laughs> so, yes, they are. <laughs> yes, they are. I, yes, I preach that all the time, but you know, in the, I'll just use Surfro as an example. They are very great. The franchise community is great. And the um, franchisor is great. And they provide a lot of structure for you. But for example, the office manager on a smaller team is responsible for AR, AP, intake, scheduling, dispatching, job file maintenance, um, recruiting, and HR. That like blows your mind. That is so much. Can that person actually be good? They're jack of all trades, master of none. So I mean, if my, my advice, if you're a smaller team is just on your org chart, write down what those business divisions of those 12 that each person's responsible for. If all of it's going to the office manager and none of it's going to the GM or any other person, you probably have a problem there. You know, you're going to, you're set up for failure. So um, just not only put the things down on an org chart, but put down those business divisions that everybody's responsible for. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was, you're the best. I just I love having you on and you know, your stuff and your notes and you're ready. I, I love, <laughs> um, okay. So you kind of hinted to some of this in your last answer, but talk a little bit about maybe one or two positions that you think are more unique to your company that have served a restoration company. Well, that might fit into other companies and you, you just haven't seen this as a popular position. Um, so I don't know if it's more uh, specific, position specific, um, okay. what we've implemented over the last couple of years. And again, I mean, I know I'm speaking more to a larger team. Like we have the ability to do this now that we have multiple locations. And I understand a lot of people listening might not have this ability, but what we've done is identified those 12 business divisions and now created subject matter experts that are responsible for just that. Like we're going through um a reorganization currently you know it's going to be rolled out in the next two months where there's these um business divisions that we are still gray nobody's really owning them estimating being one of them how scary is that how much money is in estimating and we don't have anybody overseeing it and making sure that we're optimizing our estimates that's you know i don't even want to think about how much money has been left out on the door and that's your top line uh, you know yes, yes. Line. so um i think re thinking in terms of subject matter experts. So we are now creating shared services that oversees all four offices and that each business division has a ser shared services leader that is responsible for that, keeps everybody accountable for it. And they're the ones that you go to and they're responsible for coaching, training and keeping accountability. Okay. So maybe not a specific position, but uh, an idea of a range of positions. Yes. Okay. So what advice would you have, which again, this is, you've kind of already mentioned this. If people were listening to this and had one takeaway for here's one thing to bring into your company when it comes to organizational structure that could help you with the profitability element of all of this, what would you say? All right. It's nobody's going to like it. Um, I, <laughs> my favorite quote is the opportunity for success is missed by most because it's dressed in overalls and looks like work. So this is going to take work and you're not going to like it, but you have to do it. You have to get down on the ground, like undercover boss and understand every role in your company because you have, are setting yourself up for like getting the wool pulled over your eyes, right? If you don't yes. understand 
what's a reasonable amount of roles and responsibilities for each position and, and how much time does that take out of their week to do those things, you're not gonna be able to set up this org structure correctly. And I've done it. I mean, I've went and re put like a looking forward org chart together and I don't know the production side of things as well. And I'll bring it to Jim and our COO and they're like, Trish, you're crazy. This is not gonna work. But that's because I don't understand the roles and responsibilities. So yeah. get in there, understand each role and then document it, document it, document it. You need to be having um, set roles and responsibilities filled out for every single position in your company. It's gonna set you up for success. But that's not what have... here, but. <laughs> <laughs> do you have like, do you have a specific, software or template or how did you create your org structure was it just initially like on a piece of paper what did you do it was originally on powerpoint which is terrible okay. <laughs> so <laughs> you can only fit so much on that square so i actually got lucid app which i mean i talk about it all the time i don't get royalties for that <laughs> so i just love it so um it's it's cool it's like an interactive uh web-based tool that um, you can expand it to as large as you want and it's fun uh, it's changed everything. I use it for more than just work structure, structures. I'll, I just did a ring tree for our um, company-wide phone group. So <laughs> I love it. All right. Okay, Trish, well, anything else you want to add that we haven't talked about? Um, I don't think so. I mean, there's a lot I could go into, but I just really would hound down on the fact that you got to put the work in now. And before, if you are that 10 person company, Take the time, work till 12 a.m. one night and get it done so you can focus because it's going to pay off dividends in the future for sure. Okay. So I guess one question about the org chart, how often has yours changed or morphed? I mean, you create it and then you grow. So how often should you actually be reviewing and seeing if this structure is still working for you? Oh, great point. Uh, all the time, all the time. Yep. I mean, we look at it probably once a month just to make sure that everything makes sense. So, and it's- okay evolved tremendously and it's it's never going to stay static so i would just say if you're a set it and forget it you're setting yourself up to fail for sure you got to be reviewing and same thing for those roles and responsibility documents you know they has got to they have to be updated for sure so. perfect well trish thank you so much and for those who are listening if you want more from trish and all of her wisdom she has done a previous podcast with me so you can find it on the cnr youtube channel or on our uh, website or whatever it may be. Trish, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks.